condominiums can be a great purchase for a lot of people. Whether you're a full-time resident, a part-time, maybe you're a snowbird, or for those investors. Uh, it's great because you can lock it up and leave. There's less maintenance. There's a lot of benefits to buying a condominium. But you've got to keep in mind that there are a few other things you need to factor in when you're looking at condos. And often people are sometimes a little surprised when I start to talk to them about condos and some of the other things that we need to think about and factor in. So in this video, I'm going to share with you some things that may or may not be some negatives to you when it comes to condominiums. Hi, I'm Jill Thomas and each week I bring new videos about living here in the beautiful Sunshine State and then in particular the Sarasota Bradenton area and then of course I like to talk about real estate. So if you've been thinking about coming or going from this area or making a little switch if you're already living here then this might be a good channel for you. So be sure to tap that subscribe button, hit the notification bell and keep on watching. But really most importantly when you're ready to have a solid conversation about these things and answer some of your questions like maybe about condominiums then please give me a call text or email me i'm here to help you out When buying any type of place, you really need to count the cost up front and do as much homework as possible so you're not surprised later on. So often I'll have people call me and because they do a lot of research, which is great, that's maybe why you're watching this video right now, they think that they've got a pretty solid understanding and they're really ready to go. But then I'll dig a little bit deeper, ask some more questions, and then often reveal some things that they're still a bit surprised about. So hopefully this video is going to clarify a few things for you. So here's five things you need to know before you buy a condominium. Number one, association dues. Now people aren't surprised that condominiums do have regular dues that you have to pay, whether you pay them monthly or quarterly. But it's more than just looking at what the dollar amount is. Sometimes people will go, oh, look, this is, you know, relatively low association dues. This is awesome. But what we need to do is look at that budget and see how much money is in reserves. Because if there is not money being socked away, you know, when a roof does need to be replaced or repaired, if the association covers the roofs, or maybe the exterior of the buildings need to be pressure washed and painted, or maybe the swimming pool needs some attention and some repairs. If the money's not there to do those things, then guess what? You as an owner still get to pay for it. You didn't pay for it through paying your monthly dues or your regular association dues, but they're gonna levy a special assessment. And usually that's one lump sum or a couple lump sums, maybe you'd pay it quarterly. And usually we're talking thousands of dollars. So really look at those association dues. And I'll talk more about the budget in just a minute, but take a look at that and see exactly what it covers to make sure that you're not gonna be surprised in the near future with a hefty assessment. Number two, parking. Now, sometimes you might think, well, that's pretty obvious, Jill, when I'm looking at a building, if I'm looking at a property, what the parking situation is. But we always want to double check. Now, maybe a garage is included, but sometimes you can look at a complex and you go, oh, I see garages there, so one of those must be mine. But sometimes they're only for certain units in that building. So you could have a garage. Sorry for my dog barking there. <laughs> it could be a garage. It could be a car port space or it could just be open parking but we can't assume that we have to know how many and which spots are assigned to that unit so for instance i had a listing in bradenton a lovely little condo and if you drove through you saw these carport spaces in the parking lots but if you really counted up how many carport spots there were and how many units were around in that section, there's not enough carport spots for each unit. And for that particular unit, there was not one assigned to them or deeded to the unit. It was open parking. They could park in any other open spot except for the carport spots. So that's really important to understand what parking is available. And then, you know, of course, know what's important to you in regards to that. Number three, friendly neighbors. Now this is not really something that we can do research on. It's not like we're going to get something on a piece of paper like a budget or see what parking spots are assigned to a unit. But living in a condominium, 
often involves having a little bit more of a tight-knit community, which could be a real blessing if you do need that personally, or you know, you just like the idea of somebody kind of keeping an eye on your place when you're away. So that can really be a benefit and a blessing. But sometimes it could be a little bit of a burden if people are starting to get a little nosy. And sadly, you can't really know what that's like until you live there. But maybe you can hang out a little bit. Sometimes people will go to the community pool and try to talk to folks who are there, things like that, to get a feel for the neighborhood, kind of understand the vibe a bit. But you know, this is close quarters when you've got condo living. Number three, laundry. Now this is not this is something that not everybody thinks about up front. So if you live in a condominium, there's gonna be some sort of laundry facilities available somewhere for you. It's not like you need to go to some public laundromat to do your laundry. But this is some of the scenarios that you might see when you're looking at condominiums. First of all, of course, there could be laundry facilities right inside your unit. Whether you have a little laundry room, it could be in a closet somewhere, or if you have a garage, sometimes the laundry could be the washer and dryer could be in the garage, especially with those villas. We see that often with the older villas. Now, the next thing would be that there's laundry facilities available somewhere. If it's a high rise, often you see laundry on every floor. There's facilities right there on every floor, so you don't have to go far. Or sometimes it's just somewhere in the building or somewhere on the premises. This is different for all types of buildings because there isn't just like, oh, we just have high rises and mid rises and that's it. So I've seen them come up in different ways, shapes and forms, but there'd be laundry facilities somewhere on the property. And then often the third thing is sometimes if there's not laundry facilities available inside the unit, if there's no hookup, sometimes you can have that hookup installed. You have to pay for it. The association will do it for you. Now, if that's the case, if you are allowed to put the laundry facilities in your own unit, typically the association is going to tell you where, especially if it's a stacked building, if it's a high rise or a mid rise, because they know the best place for the plumbing and things like that. So they'll tell you where you're allowed to put it. But keep in mind that sometimes those dry are going to be what they call a ventless dryer. And that means that they're not as efficient in drying bulkier things like let's say if you had jeans or blankets or towels. So sometimes if people do that, wash their personal items in their own unit. And then if they do have those bulkier items, then they'll go use the public facilities that are available from the association to get your laundry done. So think about that too with the laundry facilities. Some people don't care and then some people are very particular about that. Number four, pets. Now, just because you buy a condominium and it's yours and it's in your name, it doesn't mean that everybody in your family is invited. And I'm talking about your fur babies, your four-legged friends, or maybe a two-legged friend. If you have a pet, please let your agent know right away that you do and be prepared to share the breed, the size, the weight. You've got to give some details. Now, some associations don't allow any pets at all. Some will allow dogs, cats, birds, anything. Some might say one pet it could be up to one dog and two cats i mean some of them are very particular and then they will have some other restrictions often on weight and breed now sometimes when people call me up and i start asking them questions about their dogs they get kind of defensive or get a little secretive about that when i start asking about the weight of their dog or the breed it's like I'm asking for their PIN number. <laughs> but it's really important to know that because the in the condo rules and the condo docs, they're very specific about the size and how much those pets weigh. You can't say, well, my dog's not very big. I'm, I've got a medium sized dog. I don't know what that means. My dog is only seven pounds, so she's little. So to me, anything bigger than that is a big dog. And so it's all relative in terms of when you say size. So be prepared to provide how much your dog weighs because that's really crucial and finding the best fit for you when it comes to a condominium. Number five, rules. Yes, every condominium has a different set of rules and regulations. And like I said before, this could be a blessing to some people or a curse to others. It just depends. And everybody's a little different on how they view the rules. Some of people think it's very restrictive, it's frustrating. Other people like it because that means there's some law and order going on in that building. And so people love it. So rules could be anywhere from rental restrictions, how often often can you rent out that unit? So please don't think, oh, if I buy this, I'll use it during the winter times or half of the year, and then I'll just rent it out like VRB 
VRBO, Airbnb the thing during when I'm not there. Well, you may or may not be able to do it and how often you can do that, what length of time you can rent it out for is going to vary. So that's really important. Sometimes another rule could be something as simple as like the outdoor decor. What can you put up? Are you allowed to put up wreath on your door, Christmas decorations, things like that? Are you allowed to put lights, balcony? So they're all different in regards to what you can do to the exterior of the unit. Other rules could be the types of vehicles. I know we talked about parking, but we didn't talk about the types of vehicles. Some places don't allow motorcycles or pickup trucks. And I know some pickup trucks are beautiful and they're more expensive than a lot of people's cars or a little SUV, but they might not be allowed there. So if you do have those items and we've got to double check to make sure that you're allowed to bring them there to that building. And then another example is 55 plus. We do have a lot of 55 plus communities here in this area and of course in the state of Florida. And so if you want to be in a 55 plus community or you don't want to be, then please ask about that or please share that information. Now, sometimes there might be something about a person's lifestyle, something that's important to them that doesn't even dawn on them to share it with me as the agent to make sure that it's going to match up with a condominium because it just never they just never thought of it. They never would have thought they couldn't have a motorcycle or they can't have their pickup truck right there. As a result, what the state of Florida says is the seller has to provide to the buyer a set of the condominium documents. And this is going to include rules and regulations, the budget, the financials, bylaws, articles of incorporation, the declaration. And what happens is sometimes we can get our hands on it before closing. Otherwise, not before closing, before we go under contract. Otherwise, definitely when we go under contract, the seller has to provide a current copy of these documents to the buyer. Then the buyer has three days to review these documents. And it's really important to look at that. Look at the rules and regulations. Look at the reserves. If you have questions, you can call somebody affiliated with the association or call the management company and you can confirm those things that are important to you to know and to understand. And then if there's something in there that you don't like, you can't live with, you can get out of the contract and get your deposit money back so you are safe. So if there is something that you failed to mention, you didn't even think about mentioning, it's okay. We do have this safety net, this Florida statute that's going to protect you and give you an opportunity to review those condo docs. Okay, who likes condo living? Is it a fit for you? And I didn't even jump into the different types of buildings. I, I kind of mentioned about the high-rise, mid-rise, villas. Not all condominiums are created equal either. Maybe someday I'll do a video breaking down all of that. But do you like condo living? Now, for those of you who live in a condo or who have owned a condo, is there something I forgot to mention? If so, put it in the comments below. I don't hold back information. Sometimes I just don't think about all those little nuances right away when I'm making a video. So I'll share that with everybody so they can understand. If you want to talk to me more about condominiums or if it might be a good fit for you or not, then please give me a call. I'm here to answer your questions. I do appreciate you guys watching my video today. Have a great day. Thanks a lot.